House of Hummingbird is a 2018 feature film debut for director Kim Bora. Kim, who is also the writer of the film, reflects on her own youth in South Korea through the eyes of the film's 14 protagonist, In Hee, as portrayed by young actress Park Ji Hoo. House of Hummingbird follows In Hee's life with her dysfunctional family. We see that In Hee is an outcast in school, an outcast in her family, strained in her romantic and platonic relationships, and finds the most solace from her young Chinese teacher. House of Hummingbird's story is that about the rush of youth. And he is moving too quickly to truly understand others or even find herself. She wants connections with others, but fails to see them as people outside of her own space. Kim Young-ji, Ni's Chinese teacher and eventual confidant, explains the saying to introduce the lesson. The idea of knowing and not understanding is one of Unhee's flaws and a major line of conflict and growth within the film. House of Hummingbird's narrative is Unhee's, so much so that it is as if the story is her diary and we the viewer are reading through it without her permission. Unhee herself is dismissive of others. She doesn't notice her best friend struggling with her parents' divorce, only caring about how Jisook routed her out for their shoplifting rather than the reason why. After breaking up with her boyfriend Jiwon, she expects her relationships to Yuri to go back to its budding romance even after ignoring her in favor of said boyfriend until the breakup. This self-centeredness can be attributed to youth and the lack of familiar support. And then he's mother, while concerned about the lump behind her ear, she has then he go to appointments and sign paperwork by herself. Interestingly, the surgery shows us more about Anhee's focus in life. Before going in, she seems to care more about getting a scar than her own health. During her hospital stay, we learn about the death of Kim Il-sung, the man who has been ruling North Korea since 1948. The older women in the room chatter about it and make comments. It's clear that his death and the eventual transition of power in North Korea is important to them and to South Korea's future. And he doesn't seem to notice nor care about the situation at all. She was born well after the Korean War and may not even have solid memories of her own nation's turmoil and transition in the 80s. Instead, Eun Hee cares much more about who will visit. In the end, it is Yuri. She comes in and possesses a crush, and the two share chaste kisses on the cheek. The way we see Eun Hee's world is almost voyeuristic. Her and Yuri's kiss is filmed strangely from above and behind. It feels as if the camera isn't supposed to be there, and we the audience really should not be watching. It's clear that we are the viewer and not experiencing the story ourselves. The film itself is soft and monotone. Most of the world blends together, so we are forced to look at Anhee. Amongst her classmates, she's the only one with a brightly colored backpack, making it easy to spot her in crowds and also to be identified by her fellow students. Anhee's perspective is limited, and we are forced to deal with it both narratively and visually until tragedy strikes. <laughs> Seoul National University is the S of a group of schools referred to as the Sky Universities, the three most prestigious universities in South Korea. Korea University and Yonsei University make up the rest of the trio, and they have matriculated many of the nation's top politicians, lawyers, and so on. An American viewer can think of the Sky Universities as an equivalent to the Ivy League, and for many students, entry into one of those schools is an early make or break for their careers. While Eun Hee is not a star student, and she's pinned by her classmates and teachers as a delinquent, she is by no means unintelligent and bears the burden of her mother's academic dreams. Education is vital to socioeconomic advancements, and thus is pushed by Eun Hee's parents. The father emphasizes this much more to their son Daehoon, expecting the sisters to be considerate and supportive towards their brother's academic life. The push for Eun Hee to go to college is more for her mother to live vicariously through, as she had to give up the opportunity in favor of Eun Hee's uncle advancing his own schooling. And many looks at House of Hummingbird will cite patriarchal and Confucian influence as major aspects of the family's dysfunction. Eun Hee's brother is both physically and verbally abusive both to Eun Hee and to her older sister. He is essentially punishing them as he sees fit. We only see Daehoon be physical with Eun Hee once, for which he is chastised for, not specifically for hitting her, but for disrupting the hierarchy of the household and punishing her in front of their father, who should be the main disciplinarian. This violence is further normalized in a crushing scene between Jisook and Anhee, as they discuss the various kinds of abuse they both face from their brothers. They even go as far as to lightly discuss suicide to make their families feel guilt for how they had been treated 
as if there's seemingly no other options to be heard or seen by their parents. Then he is rarely allowed to express herself as she must hold up to the educational expectations of her school and her mother, stay in line as a girl and daughter for her father, and even live up to the reputation she has built in school. <laughs> the conflicts between expectations and self can be tied to a changing culture of fighting with the old. The growth and freedom of expression of film and music allow Eun Hee to grow up at a new, freer age. We see her smoking, dating, doing art rather than studying, and even shoplifting at one point. Eun Hee is trying to find herself by rebelling against the expectations from those around her. Art is something that we see as one of the few things that Eun Hee likes for herself. And her Chinese teacher is supportive for efforts where her family is not. Young Ji shares her own interest in comics and even gives a sketchbook to Eun Hee after quitting as a teacher. Art is a small outlet for Eun Hee, but we don't see her spend a lot of time on it, mainly as she is chastised for drawing rather than studying while at home. House of Hummingbird also dives into Eun Hee's sexuality. She begins the film with a secret boyfriend, and she is active in the relationship, freely expressing her desire to kiss and see each other. While their relationship isn't smooth sailing, with Jaewon cheating on her and his mother forcing them to break up due to their class difference, we see that the idea of love and having a person close to her is very important to Eun-hee. Surprising to some and questioned by Western viewers, Eun-hee's other romantic interest is Yuri, another female student from a grade below her. This relationship between girls is shown as normal rather than traumatic. This, according to Kim, is reflective of Korea's perception of bisexuality, saying, in middle school and high school, girls often have crushes on each other. It's common. They are fluid and open to bisexuality, and they don't define things yet. Eun Hee is bi because she can be. It's shown in the film because bisexuality just exists, and its expression is one part of Eun Hee's growing identity. The film brings nostalgia through its technology and fashions, but Eun Hee's emotions are timeless. That being said, the 1994 setting is vital to the film's story and its eventual climax. South Korea in the mid-90s was between eras. The 70s on to the late 80s were filled with protests pushing for a true democracy leading to the 1987 presidential election. They also saw a massive infrastructure project to modernize the nation after the Korean War and military dictatorships into preparations for the Seoul Olympics of 88. Much of this infrastructure was rushed and completed with errors in construction. One of these structures, the Songsu Bridge, was completed in 1979. The Songsu Bridge crossed the Han River and connected the Songdong and Gundam districts of Seoul and received heavy daily use. It tragically collapsed on the morning of October 21st, 1994. The film nods to the fact that her older sister must take the bus from their apartment in a relatively affluent area to another because she could not get into school in their district. For those familiar with the collapse, as much as the Korean audience would be, this fact aligns with one of the most tragic elements of the collapse. Students from Muhawk Girls Middle and High School were traveling across the bridge by bus as they didn't attend school in the same district they lived. As a result of the collapse, 32 people died. Of those 32 that died, 29 were passengers on the same bus as the students. Nine of those deaths were these young female students, and they are memorialized at the Muhawk School. When the bridge does collapse, and he sees this on the news as she gets to school. In a fit of fear, she runs to a payphone and calls her father. Tragedy is avoided as Suhi is revealed to be safe as she missed the bus that morning. The family avoids the full brunt of tragedy, but this cannot be said for Unhee herself, and discovers that Young Ji was killed in the bridge collapse. This death forces Eunhee to reframe her perspective away from just herself and slow her life down. This realization also mirrors the necessary change of pace for Korea in the late 90s. The Songsu Bridge collapse was not the only tragedy of the nation's fast-paced construction. In 1995, the Samsung department store collapse further forced the nation and the Kim Yong-sum administration to reflect on the dangers of rapid moves forward. The film's Korean title, Bolse, meaning hummingbird, is reflected of both in his character and that of South Korea. These tragedies were a point of reflection for the nation. The legal blame for the bridge collapse went to the Dong-e construction company due to a faulty build and the Seoul government for a lack of maintenance of the bridge. But socially, the tragedy is tied to the idea of too much, too fast. The nation was eventually forced to slow down in 97 as the Asian financial crisis hit South Korea and the IMF bailout conditions came into play. We can see this forced reckoning and slowing down for Eunhee and her family. House of Hummingbird is an aesthetically pleasing film that deals with the tragedies of youth, family, and society. While the story must take place in Korea and in 1994, 
due to the events and culture it critiques. Book New Story is one that many can relate to and many can learn from.